Give me a minute. I'm just looking at memes. Release the brain to make the brain warm. So we will never admit the stupid mistakes we made when we were young, especially when it came down to modifying cars. I did nothing wrong ever when I was 16. I made no mistakes when I was building my 1994 3000 GT SL. I did not make mistakes or argue with my dad about the fact that ground wires actually improved horsepower. And I definitely didn't talk to him about how the fact that like, you know, my wheels, when they didn't have the piece that held the lugs, made the car lighter and therefore faster. When we were young, we all just sometimes said and or did some pretty silly things when it came to modifying our car. So we figured that we would talk to you guys and maybe reminisce on the past with some of our viewers that we know did these things to their cars when they were probably around 16 or 17 years old. I'm Alex from Fitment Industries. Don't forget to subscribe so we can keep making videos like this and let's just get right in. To it. The first thing that probably everybody has done or has at least thought about doing when they were young or had their first car was cutting their springs. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> So a lot of people always see cutting their springs as like the fast way out, especially when it came down to lowering your car. And some of us have done it and some of us haven't. And we'll never admit if we have or have not done it. But at the end of the day, a lot of cars, when they didn't have cheap options for coilovers or lowering springs, people would just end up cutting their springs and then putting it back in. Then they would wonder why they were rolling around like a tugboat on top of like Lake Michigan and they could never really actually drive their car at a safe speed because their top would just be doing one of these. At the end of the day, it was something that ruined a lot of people's cars but it looked good when it was staying still because you could cut it it just dropped the car it was easy it was cheap and it was a little bit little bit amateur but we won't really talk about it at the end of the day though a lot of people ended up selling those cars and when they went to buy their next car they ended up getting actual lowering springs because they probably had a job that paid more you know they were maybe feeling more like an adult and they picked up ibox like in a responsible teenager. Now, we won't talk about the next thing in terms of a story, but I remember countless times that everybody would go out onto eBay and buy whatever exhaust they could for their car because it was affordable. <laughs> I know with the brands like SSAX and brands like that where it was these no-name brands that supplied mufflers and exhausts and things like that for like legitimately pennies on the dollar when it came down to metal and you would sit there trying to justify the grade of steel or aluminum or metal that they used to justify the fact that it was a no-name brand to put on your car because it was like $900 cheaper than the actual name brand exhaust that you could get for your car. At the end of the day, there was a lot of people that did it. They either totally did it and just completely disregarded the fact that they didn't care that the, the welds were terrible or the fact that nothing actually matched up or that it came with no gaskets so it was just metal on metal and it just made this terrible rasping noise. Or you tried to justify it and you'd say the brand's super cool. You'd be like, yeah. It's double SAX. You've never heard of it. It's, it's, it's a European brand. And they'd be like, wow, really? That's, that's a cool brand. How much did it cost? And you're like, oh, um, two, 270, 270. And they're like, oh, for, for the muffler, for the, like, the cat back? And you're like, no, for the whole thing. I would like, if I had like a, a 40 or whatever it is that you pour out when, when, you, when you have to think about things past, I would do it right now so that we could sit together, me and you, and talk about Plasti Dip as being one of those modifications that probably did at one point in your life, whether you did it temporarily or you did it to justify the means to an end. Somebody probably when they were young used Plasti Dip to modify their car or you might be sitting there watching this video in the garage Plasti Dipping your wheels. If I could just give you one tip, if I could just give you one tip just right there, let me just, I'll get real close. I'll just, don't. Everybody makes a mistake or two in life, right? Plasti Dip is one of those mods that came and went and it's really not a mod. I'm sorry, there's people that said it, but Plasti Dip is something that like was used as a temporary thing and turned into a permanent thing. And as a result, people started Plasti Dipping everything on their cars, anything they possibly could, wheels, emblems, tail lights, interior pieces, everything in between. But the problem was, is that Plasti Dip is this rubber adhesive that if it wasn't kept up with, it would scratch or peel off, or even worse, like dust would get set on it and it would stick to it and it would look like a 
looked like a pair of 20 year old fuzzy handcuffs on the like on your car and it just looked bad and it still kind of looks bad and if you're a proper adult you would just go get your wheels powder coated or repainted and get them fixed up like you should or just buy new wheels at fitmanindustries.com right going up next would probably be fake badges that's it fake badges your a6 is not an rs6 i'm sorry your nismo is not a nismo right I gotta stop saying that. So we talked about fake cheap exhaust, but what about those fake intakes? I remember going into the aisle seven of AutoZone, even though you, I, that it didn't happen actually. I never went into AutoZone or Reliance or Advanced to buy stuff that looked really shiny and fun. And you would get to the aisle where you got to see the infamous stand, that golden stand where angels sang and cried in it. And on it in big bold words, it said two letters, K. N. And you got really, really excited because you knew that intake, you get horsepower, you just do put the K and N on there and you'll be good to go. Only problem is, is that it was 200 bucks and you're like, ah, that's a lot. That's like a lot of money for 16 year old me. And instead you ended up going onto eBay or Amazon and you found the next closest thing for $47.99 on free two day shipping because you're a student and you bought that instead. And then you would go to install it and it would not sit in even the remote appropriate place. It'd be made out of really thin metal that didn't line up with your throttle body or anything like that. And then you kind of just cursed yourself out because you would install it and then you drive down to your friend's house the next day and then it would fall off or it'd get loose or the clamp would not actually tighten up completely because it wiggled around too much and then you ended up just putting the intake on without the metal piece and you threw the metal piece away and then you sold it because you knew that was a terrible idea. Cheap intakes are just as bad as the cheap exhausts that have no brand, no name, but at the end of the day, you did it because the picture looked cool and the filter was like blue or pink or purple or something like that. Finally, we have the other thing that probably would signify the immediate rest of something you probably did when you were young and will never do again, probably cheap headlights. You remember it, I remember it. Anybody that owns a Euro car definitely remembers this. I remember having every single Euro car I've ever owned have cheap little tabs that broke all the time when you put the take out the headlights and put it back in. So at the end of the day, you're like, I could just get these super cool RS style lights that my A4 or A6 definitely doesn't have. And I could install, be like 500 bucks, it looks super cool. But at the end of the day, there were black housings with chrome things and LED strips and the same plastic tabs that ended up breaking the moment that you installed installed them. Cheap headlights ultimately would just angle upwards and shine the next person coming down the road down Highway 41 and you'd be wondering why you did this in the first place and all of a sudden your nice sleek B5 S4 and you know the iconic and moly yellow now just looked like a hunk of junk because you decided to change the headlights. But at the end of the day 2016 came around and everybody decided that they wanted their street car to look like a track car and at the end of the day aero is expensive. Liberty walk, wings, things like that, battle aero, everything in terms of ground effects and everything in between was not a real cheap product to buy and especially when it came down to diffusers and splitters you were paying out the ass when it came down to buying these parts unless you got the cheap version. And that probably came from Amazon or Wish because apparently that's a thing now too. Thank you Wish for now making it easier to do terrible decisions to your car that I would have probably made if I was younger as well. When you talk about fake aero or even just bad aero, you're talking about the people that would install the big gigantic wing on the back of the car, but then nothing in the middle and then nothing in the front. Or they put this huge diffuser splitter thing on the front and then they had stock clearance, they had stock suspension with no side skirts. If you're gonna do aero, make sure you have aero that goes throughout the entire body of the car. Another thing that probably isn't too common anymore, but definitely something that I remember back in uh, the day, as they would say, would be Lambo doors. Not even the official Lambo doors that we talked about with KW Automotive actually starting way back in the early, I would even say 90s. We're talking about like the third party Lambo doors, the ones that went up, or the ones that went, you open the door and then they would go up. They would like slide out and then go up. But the problem was is the hydros were so bad on those that they never actually stayed up. You'd bring them up and then they would crack back down and then they'd hit people's heads when you were getting out of the car on your Honda Civic or Tag or anything like that and it looked like absolute poop. A lot of times people did that when they were young because that was like the cool thing to do and it looked neat you know on paper when you told people that you were going to put your doors up in the air but then at the end of the day that was before facebook 
and, and MySpace. And it was really just forums at the time and it was really hard to post. So you didn't get judged as much as you do now. Whereas when you post it now, unless you're like a big flash, flashy car, it looks, just looks wrong. And the final one that I know, I just know that somebody, everybody that's watching this video has done something on this list. So if you're here yet, I want you to like, just do it. Imagine if, if imagine you're confessing, imagine you're at confession. I want you to go in the comments. And I want you to put which one of these that were you and why and what car you own, because then I'll feel better about sharing all of my terrible ideas when I was young. The last thing is bad tint. You remember going to Z Barts or whatever it was and you'd go to get your windows tinted and seven windows was like $290. And again, you're back in square one. You're like, that is really expensive. I could buy my own 3M window tint off Amazon for like $49 and then I could just install it myself. Sometimes you do that when you're 16. Sometimes you do it when you're 28. Either way, regardless of what your age, it is always a terrible decision because it ends up looking terrible. You cut it wrong, it gets purpley or it gets bad. Or when you're young, you put it on your, your Honda Civic or your 3000 GT or your Teggy or your Mercedes or whatever car that got handed to you when you were 16 years old. And you think it looks good because you took a picture in the right light, but then the moment you actually drove it or you sold it and you look back the next year when you actually got the tint installed correctly and you're like, rough. That was a rough time. So those are modifications that you probably did when you were young. Drop a comment on which one you did. And if you say you never did any of them, I know you're a liar. So you guys don't forget to subscribe. I'm Alex from Fitment Industries. If you're looking for wheels, tires, suspension, fitmentindustries.com. I'm gonna stay subscribed again so we can keep making these videos. I will see you later. Peace.